Our next guest uh, is getting in on the SPAC way, but joining the fray as one of the only women-backed and women-funded SPACs. Dana Settle is a co-founder and partner at Greycroft. She has recently announced a SPAC deal with the entrepreneur Catherine Power, focused on acquiring $800 million to $1.5 billion in assets in the beauty industry. Dana Settle, welcome. Good to see you. Great. Thanks, Tyler. Nice to see you. Well, I'm delighted to have you with us, and, and I want to spend some time with you, and I want to get to the SPAC in the beauty industry and so forth. But, you know, SPACs have been controversial, I suppose. They, they, they've taken uh, their uh, share of hits in the press. Um, but tell me why SPACs are a good thing. Why do they benefit the market, the individual investor? Whom do they disintermediate? Why are they good? Yeah, look, I mean, we really see SPACs as being a great new tool sort of in the investing kit. And we don't see it as necessarily an exit. We see it as a, you know, as a financing round, essentially. Um, and what is great is it actually provides access to the public markets and to a lot of retail investors to companies that will, you know, in, in many cases experience much higher growth because they're coming out earlier than they may otherwise have. And they're coming out earlier. I guess you make the case then that there would be more, more relatively more money to be made then by the retail investors that that investor than traditionally might have been made by uh, VCs or or investment bankers. Have I got that right? Sort of, kinda. Yeah, I mean certainly we you know in in the case that we are looking at empowered brands. I mean we're looking at beauty brands that are right. earlier in their life cycle where there is significant growth ahead of them. And that's something that just historically has not been possible. You think about so, these yeah. beauty... I want to turn then to the, to the beauty brands, and you've, you raised more money than you initially expected. Am I right on that? That's right. You We're, raised, raised one and a half billion, uh, yeah. and you're going to go after the beauty brands that are not... Uh, well, that obviously are not owned by the major conglomerates, that exist on their own. They are sustainable brands. I think of my, uh, my nearby neighbor, uh, uh, Bobby Brown, who has come out with a new brand. She would be a candidate, I assume, for your portfolio. So you're going to buy strategically and put together, I assume, a portfolio of these brands. That's right. That's right. Yeah, we're lo really looking at putting together a portfolio of brands that really have, you know, sort of the same values that are starting from the place of, of really, you know, building uh, sustainable supply chains and, and eliminating waste and, you know, that, that really have um, natural ingredients and, and, you know, frankly, are, are taking into things like diversity, equity and inclusion from the beginning. And we really see this as being driven and, and demanded by the consumer. Hey, Dana, it's Frank Collin here. Um, we're right now, we're actually looking at some of the beauty stocks outperformance this year. Beauty stocks doing very well this year to date. Um, I want to ask you about the companies you're acquiring. How important is ESG to the companies that you're uh, acquiring or planning to acquire? And how important do you think it will be in, for the people who are going to invest in your company? Do you have a target investor? Yeah, I mean, we think it's very important for these companies. We, you know, again, the, the modern consumer is really demanding. Um, and they're looking all the way through uh, from, you know, the ingredients in the, in the products that they're using uh, through to the, the the investors that are backing the companies, really sort of looking all the way through. And so, you know, we see that as being a big part of our strategy uh, and a big reason that I partnered with Catherine Power, who is an incredible entrepreneur in this space and spends all of her time, you know, really focused on this millennial and Gen Z consumer. And that's what's that's what's really driving the, the need for change. And we see it as being a huge opportunity to create a new entity um, to address the consumer demands. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.